time watching one of my videos. Thank you so much. I hope that you learned something new or you're inspired to do something new. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. So today what we are going to be doing is we are going to make a tumbler. My cousin just graduated from high school and she's about to move into her dorm and she specifically asked me for a tumbler. So these are the tumblers that I usually make. Of course, this is with glitter and epoxy. Um, and this takes maybe two days to make it so that it can cure and be usable. But today, what we are going to do is we are going to sublimate a tumbler. This is a 20 ounce tumbler. Um, we are going to, I already have a design that I created, but I'll show you the steps for designing your, um, your image and we are going to sublimate it. I also found um, a glitter background on Google because she really, well, she specifically asked for glitter. Um, and so we're going to see how this turns out. Of course, I waited until the last minute. So I want her, she's leaving in the morning and I want to make sure that she has a nice tumbler that she can take with her. And just doing the regular epoxy with the glitter is not going to cut it. We'll have to wait a few days and she may not get it until next week. So we are going to see, this is going to be my first time trying with this glitter uh, background to sublimate it, okay? So let's get started. All right, y'all. So first things first, what we are going to do is we are going to measure our tumbler because uh, we want to make sure that it aligns properly, the image aligns properly when we get ready to uh, tape it down and sublimate it. So to start, let's, and this tumbler, it looks like it's straight up and down but it's actually not. Um, the top part of the tumbler is a bit wider than the bottom. So usually you may wanna go to the center. We're gonna measure this in inches. You may wanna do it, start it at the center to kind of see what you get. And here we see that it's right exactly at the nine inch mark. But if we go up here, it's a little larger. And I'm pulling the, the measuring tape very tightly. Okay, so it's like nine and a quarter. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Okay, and if we go down to the very bottom, it's about eight and a half inches, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make the image based on the largest point, and then what we can do is we can trim the edges after that, okay? So that's the first thing that you want to do so that you will know um, how large to make your image. And then of course you want to measure the height. And it's about eight inches high, as you guys can see, okay? So we are going to get ready to create our image. We are going to design this image in Photoshop. You can use any um, design software you want. There's tons of free design softwares on um, online, like GAM. Inkscape or um, let's just cameo silhouette, okay. But today we are going to be designing this inside of Photoshop, okay. So this tutorial is really just to show the sublimation of the tumbler, but we are going to try to make the design process as brief as possible. So, what we're going to start out with, we are going to start out with creating a rectangle. And we know that we want this to be nine and a quarter at least. So we're gonna change the properties of this rectangle to nine and a quarter by eight inches, okay? 
And so here we have our rectangle. And I'm just going to make another layer. I should have put the rectangle in another layer. So I'm gonna do. All right, so now we want to make our background, okay? So we are going to go into Safari. And let's look for a glitter background. There it is. Okay, there's several, but we want to do a gold glitter because that's the design that I have. And so you get these different options here, but we're going to look under images. And, oh, that's a nice, pretty glitter, gold glitter. So we'll use this one. And then all we're going to do is we are going to copy it from here. And then we will go back into Illustrator. Okay, so for us to put the image specifically inside of this box, you need to double click onto it and find the path. And then you are going to hit draw inside because you want everything that we do to be inside of the rectangle. And then we are going to paste. Now here we have, and then we can see if you draw inside, even no matter how big you make the image, it will not go outside of the, the parameters of the rectangle or whatever shape you do it in. Okay, so here's our background. Easy peasy. Next, we are going to put in a logo. So this is for her personal use. Um, it's just a gift from me to her. So we are going to look for UCF logo. And that's University of Central Florida logo. And we do want the background to be transparent. Okay, so we're gonna use this one. Let's copy that image. And then we are going to do the same thing. We are simply going to put it here okay and there we have our UCF logo let me make it just a tad bit smaller okay next what we're going to do is we are going to put her name on it because she wants to have her name along with class of 2024 okay so the original design that I did, I simply created another um, rectangle shape and I put it to go vertically along the, the tumbler and I changed the background to black. Okay, so I'm gonna do text. And her name is Morgan. And the text, we are going to make it white. All right, so we are going to change the font. And we are going to use one of my favorite cursive fonts. Um, it's kind of fun looking. It's Beauty Mermaid. Okay, so here we have, I'm just going to push it up a little bit. And then we are going to next create 24. We are going to create um, an outline of the letters. Next, I want to go up to object and expand. And then I am also going to create a compound path. And I'm just going to change all this back to white. And then we are going to open up the Pathfinder tool and then I'm going to unite it. And then the same thing will apply to this.
So what we need to do next is I'm going to select Morgan and then I'm also going to select our black rectangle. So everything is selected and then I want to, because I want the glitter to show through, I am going to minus the front. And there we have it. So what we're going to do, this is going to be my design. Um, I'm not doing anything else, it's fairly simple. And we can get ready to print it. Okay, for this next step, what you'll need is you'll need um, scissors, heat tape, of course your printed image, and your tumbler. Make sure that you clean your tumbler off. I used um, an alcohol wipe and just cleaned it off and let it dry a bit um, so that there's nothing blocking the image from sublimating onto it. And I also have a cutter that I use um, just to make sure that my lines are straight. Typically before we print, and I forgot, I'm not sure if you can see the um, outline, the black outline. I usually remove the black outline because I don't like um, the outline look. It doesn't make it seamless, so I'm going to try to get rid of that. So we're done cutting it. And what we are going to do next is we are going to wrap our tumbler as tightly as possible around but before we do that let's make sure we take off our top we don't want to put this cover inside of um the convection oven okay so we are going to make sure we do this as tightly as possible so that it's lined up you can see how it's pretty much perfectly lined up and then we know that the top was a little bit bigger, so that is where we may encounter, um, well, the bottom is where we're going to encounter a little overlapping. So I'm just going to mark where I need to cut it a bit. Let's see if it fits perfectly. So here it doesn't really matter if it overlaps because I don't really have an actual design that it will be overlapping onto. So, and I did that on purpose because when you have at the edge, like when you have like a design right there, you it has to match up perfectly and you don't want the overlapping because this will go through and get onto the tumbler, even if it overlaps. Like the sub paper does not block the ink. Okay. And this is where having a tape dispenser comes in handy. Okay. Because right here, like you literally need to use both hands or you need one hand holding and the other hand pulling the tape. Okay, so continue taping and pulling that sub paper as tight as possible, okay? And then here, um, just to make sure there's not too much paper overlapping, what I usually do is take my X-Acto knife and just try to slice, um, slice the paper according to the paper below, just so that we can get a nice, um, line sometimes it does overlap a little bit and i think this one just overlapped slightly towards the bottom and be careful you don't want to cut your uh the other paper you just want to cut the one that's on top and keep taping Okay, next we are going to get ready to shrink wrap this um, so that you can, so that we can put it inside of the convection oven. Okay, for the next part of preparing to sublimate, 
we are going to use um, shrink wrap. I ordered this shrink wrap from Amazon and this heat gun also from Amazon. Okay, I do have another video that will show you um, sublimating without using shrink wrap. And this one's kind of big. Um, so I am going to cut a little bit of it, okay? Give it a nice tight pull. I don't throw away the shrink wrap. I re I can use this for another item. And then so that it doesn't move, I kind of like to make sure also before because the shrink wrap is going to tighten around it anyway, but I also like to make sure that it's extra tight. I don't want anything blocking it. Okay. That's another important right there. Go ahead and stuff it inside. Okay, it's all shrink wrapped, it's tight. Now we're going to get ready to place this inside of the convection oven. Okay, so we have um, two tumblers that we are going to um, put into our convection oven. One has the shrink wrap and the other does not. Okay, so we are going to see what difference the shrink wrap makes the oven is set at 400 and we're going to leave these in for about six minutes. What you typically want to do is you want to have an oven um, thermometer so that you can check the heat inside. I can't find mine right now. So we are just going to go ahead. It's been on for a while so I know that it's up to par. Okay, and so we're going to sit this here. We are going to wait. All right, so as you can see, we're getting ready to take them out, but you can pretty much see the color um, through the sub paper. So that's a clear indication that these are probably ready, okay? Okay, so we've taken them out and we are going to get ready to just off this is the one with the heat wrap on it that I was concerned with the glitter, the seam a little bit. You can kind of see it a little bit there. Not sure if you guys can really tell. Now let's see the one that we did without 
any shrink wrap. How did that one come out? I can see the color through it. So let's see. And I put extra layers of tape just to try to keep it taped down. That's really the key is making sure that the sub paper is in contact with the tumbler. So that is definitely the key to making it work. So let's see if it withheld. Oh, looks like it possibly did. I guess I had some line in my thing, but for the most part, I'm impressed. And this is it without um, shrink wrap. So it came out pretty, pretty good. And this is the seam in the back that we had to connect it. And see, that's why I don't want too much overlapping because I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a little bit over. So you just gotta try to make sure that not too much is overlapping. But from here to here is pretty perfect. And this is the one without using shrink wrap. Here, I think it could have used a little more taping probably around the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it kind of blends in with the actual picture. So this is the UCF one. I don't even need those gloves, but this is the UCF one. And I think it looks pretty good. And in comparison to the two, I think that you can definitely sublimate on tumblers without shrink wrap. Um, yeah, you can. So shrink wrap, no shrink wrap. Okay, so we are all done. And this is our tumbler that we did. Um, and you can see the glitter. It looks sparkly, kind of. Um, it does have a different shine than the glitter epoxy method, but nonetheless, this is super easy and super quick to do, way quicker than glittering um, a tumbler, okay? But it came out really good. I had this in the convection oven for six minutes at 400 degrees, and everything came out great. And I'm sure that Morgan will love it. So, Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, please like your girl's video and also subscribe to my channel, okay? Thank you so much for watching.